So uh, I think we can start na. So thank you for attending your, your laboratory today. So for today's meeting class, since you have already discussed your smear preparation, we would be discussing the last two, one of the last two modules this midterms, which is your staining techniques. So after your smear preparation class, you would proceed now to your staining technique. Now your staining technique class has a very important purpose in which that it is used to color microbes with a dye which emphasizes your structure now remember if you recall in the previous module i've discussed that your microorganisms specifically your bacteria would appear colorless now if they are colorless you would have a hard time you would have a hard time identifying them but with the addition of a stain you would learn to appreciate the appearance and the morphology of your bacteria there would be easier easier identification class easier identification of your microorganisms aside from easier identification class you would have the ability or the, the knowledge to differentiate one group of organism from another. This would allow you to properly, properly diagnose a disease. Now, what are the classes of ionizable dyes class? So we have your basic dyes. So this basic dyes class are commonly used in your bacteriology. They are cationic. Examples of this are your methylene blue, basic fuchsin, crystal violet, safranin, and malachite green. Please copy. You have your hand out. Class, I have a question. Let, let's just let's let's test now if you recall um, the definition of cation. Anyone who remembers or knows the definition of cation? Yes. Uh, Sam? You're raising your hand? Um, cut ion, sir, is a positively charged ion, sir. Okay, very good. So if they are a positively charged ion, where would they bind? Where would they bind? Rather, what type of an Yes, Lance, you're raising your hand. Um, cut anode, sir. Or so negatively charged. Or okay. negatively anode. Negative. Electrode, I mean negative charge okay so dito class in your cat ionic this is a positively charged a positive charge that would bind positive charge that would bind with negative sorry naging <laughs> g that would bind with negative cell components again your cationic are positively charged dyes positively charged dyes that would bind with negative cellular cell components an example of your negative cell component is your cell wall So again, for the last time, cationic are positively charged dyes that would bind with negative cellular components, specifically your cell walls. Example would be your methylene blue, basic fuchsin, crystal violet, sapranin, and malachite green. Then we also have your acidic dyes. So this is an ionic meaning this is a negative charge. Is 
that would bind with positive positive components of the cell. Examples are eosin, rose bengal, and acid foxin. So please do copy. Samples are eosin, rose bengal, and acid foxy. Okay. Then we also have your different staining techniques class. So we have your simple staining. So in your simple staining class, you would only use a single basic dye. So you will only have one dye. It is used to visualize entire microbes, shell cell shapes, and structure. Example would be your methylene blue, carval foxin, Crystal Violet Saffron. So I'll discuss these stains later, class. So again, your simple staining uses only a single dye used to visualize entire microbes, cell shapes, structure. Example would be your methylene blue, carval foxin, crystal violet, and your saffron. Then we also have your differential staining. So it is use, uses more than more than one basic dye. So here class, um, you can use around two to three dyes. But in the laboratory, so practice natin, we would only be using two dyes. Now, the reason why there, there are two dyes class is because you would use these dyes to di divide or differentiate bacteria into separate groups. An example of this differential staining would be your gram stain, wherein you would differentiate them from gram positive to gram negative. And you also have your acid fast staining, which is used to differentiate uh, acid fast acid fast bacilli from non acid fast bacilli so later i will discuss this so again your differential staining would use two to three dyes but in our practice we would be using only two dyes it would divide bacteria into separate groups or to differentiate them examples would be your gram staining and acid fast staining. In gram staining, you would differentiate bacteria into either gram positive or gram negative. Well, for your acid fast staining, you would differentiate them from the acid fast bacilli, from the non acid fast bacilli. Now, uh, your staining techniques, another example would be your diagnostic antibody or DNA probe mediated. Directly specif directed specifically for the identification of a specific organism. An example for this class would be your chlamydia tra trachomatis and bordetella pertussis. So dito class, what happens is that, um, example, this would be your DNA. So, drawing. This would be your DNA. So they would be double stranded. Diba? Now, uh, what happens is that this would be um, destroyed. And when it is destroyed, class, they would then be become single stranded.
So we, we, we have a single strand DNA. Then after that class, you would use what we call a probe. Now, this probe class are your so-called markers. This probe would then attach, let's say, ang itsura ng probe nyo class is, let's simplify it, ganito na lang. They would now attach to your, to your single strand DNA. So we have your single strand DNA. Then we have your probe. Now they would attach that. After attaching class, you would stain them. You would stain them and that would allow you to identify identify them uh, let me show you a better example Wait lang class, ah. Yes. <laughs> okay, back to here. In class, as I said, um, your DNA would be destroyed and probes would attach them and that would be used to stain and identify them. They can be used in chlamydia, trachomatis, and vertetella pertussis. Any questions, Kaya? Was this, tapos na kayo class, di ba, sa ano nyo, sa malbayo nyo? Tama? Not yet, sir. Not yet, sir. Are, are you taking it this time? No, no sir. sir. Next ah, next time pa. Okay. Sige. Maybe that will be discussed there. Okay. Then another type of staining technique would be your negative staining. So you, you this is utilized class to demonstrate the presence or the diffuse presence of your capsule surrounding some bacteria so in negative staining class um, imagine this would be your your field ito yung field mo sa microscope you're viewing this everything would be dark so everything would be dark sin puro itim puro black all black then you would uh, find your capsule. Your capsule. Your capsule would appear. Would appear white. So this um, can be used in in uh, identifying your so-called fungi. Specifically your Cryptococcus neoformans. So an example of your negative stain is your India ink or nigrosin dye.
So again, in negative staining class, your entire surrounding is black. Then it is best used in identifying the presence of your capsule, specifically the fungi Cryptococcus neoformans. Examples of negative stain are your India ink and Negrosin dye. Okay, let's proceed now, class, to one of the differential staining. We have your gram staining. So your gram stain class was developed by Hans Christian Grams. It would divide your bacteria into two large groups. Primarily used to discriminate between two bacteria that causes disease in the lungs. Excuse me. Now, a general rule class in gram staining. Remember, in gram staining, you would have your gram positive and gram negative. Nung time ko class, nung time ko na nag-aaral ako, we only had these three. Ngayon, dumagdag na tong dalawang to. Now, the general rule, para matandaan nyo, all coxi, lahat daw ng coxi, all coxi are gram positive except except Neisseria bramhamella vielonella acida minococcus and megaspira again all coxi are gram positive except Neisseria bramhamella vielonella acida minococcus and megaspira Meaning, itong five na to class are coxies that are gram negative. Another one would be your so-called, please remember this acronym class. This will come in handy when you take your board exam in the future. All bacilli are gram-negative except for your mycobacterium, corinibacterium, clostridium, bacillus, Erese Philotrix. Listeria. And Lactobacillus. So remember the acronym MCC Bell. All bacilli are gram negative except Mycobacterium, Corinibacterium, Clostridium. Bacilli, erysipelotrix, listeria, and lactobacillus. So these are gram positive bacilli. If you notice, class, mas madami ang gram positive sa coxi. And if you notice, mas madami ang gram negative sa bacilli. Sa so, tandaan niyo yung rule na yan, ha? Ulitin ko. All coxi are gram-positive except Neisseria, Bramhamella, Velonella, Acidaminococcus, and Megaspira. All bacilli are gram-negative except MCC bell, Mycobacterium, Corinibacterium, Clostridium, Bacilli, Erysipelotrix, Listeria, and Lactobacillus. Then all spirals, spirochetes. Are gram negative. Are gram negative. And again, common sa coxi na mas marami ang gram positive sa coxi compared sa bacilli. While bacilli, they have more gram negative than gram positive. Questions?
So there are three theories class in your um, in regards to your gram positive bacteria. So we have the first theory, which is mgRNA. So magnesium magnesium RNA. So this theory class states that if a bacteria if a bacteria has magnesium RNA it is considered gram positive if it has no magnesium rna it is considered gram negative then another one um lipid content lipid content class so lipid content would be this would be found in your cell wall so in gram positive bacteria class the lipid content is less permeable to the colorizer. So when you say permeable, less permeable, um, less penetrated. Less penetrated to the colorizer. While your gram negative bacteria class, their lipid content are permeable to the colorizing agent. So easy to easy to penetrate again in your lipid content gram positive bacteria are less permeable to the colorizer are less penetrated or dif more difficult to penetrate with the decolorizer while your gram negative bacteria class are more permeable to the colorizing agent easier to penetrate then we have your law of magnetism. So gram-positive bacteria class has low isoelectric point, while your gram-negative bacteria has high isoelectric point. So again, in theory, if, if, an, if a bacteria has magnesium RNA, they would be considered gram-positive bacteria. But without magnesium RNA, they would be considered gram-negative bacteria. In regards to lipid content, which is found in the cell wall, your gram-positive bacteria are less permeable, less penetrative of your decolorizer, while your gram-negative bacteria is more permeable to the decolorizing agent. While in the law of magnetism, gram-positive bacteria has lower isoelectric point while your gram negative bacteria has high isoelectric point now let's proceed to the components of your gram stain so in gram stain class there are four components we have your primary stain your mordant, your decolorizer, and your counter stain. So an example of your primary stain class would be your crystal violet, methyl violet, and gentian, gentian violet. Now, in your crystal violet class in the laboratory, you would commonly encounter crystal, crystal violet. Now, more than would be your grams iodine. Class, do you have any idea what your more than does? Anong effect ni more than sa staining? Yes, Mira. The more than enhances the staining of the um, object. All right, very good. It enhances. It enhances the effect of your dye. specifically your primary stain and then we also have your decolorizer so earlier class diba sabi sa law of uh, sa cell wall gram positive are less permeable to your decolorizer meaning they have a difficult time of penetrating the cell wall meaning mas mare retain mas mare retain yung primary stain primary stain sa gram positive. 
again, earlier in your cell wall law, where in lipid content, um, gram positive would retain more the primary stain due to being it less permeable to your decolorizer. So an example of your decolorizer class would be your ethanol, acetone, or a one-to-one -one ethanol acetone mixture. In your practice, pag nag-intern kayo, this is the type of decolorizer that you would commonly encounter. This can be commercially prepared. commercially prepared or it can be um, personally made. Kayo gagawa. Then another one would be your counter stain. So your counter stain would be your dilute carbofoxin, safranin, or neutral red. In your practice, you would encounter your safranin. So let's say, class, um, you have here your slide. So you would add your primary stain, which is your CV. After that, you would now add your decolorizer. After adding the decol, uh, sorry, you would add first your more than, sorry. You would add first your mordant. Nasanay kasi ako class sa, sa AFP staining. We don't use mordant kasi dun eh. Well, there's a mordant, pero heating siya. It's not really a state. I'll, I'll discuss it later. Then mordant, then decolorizer. After the decolorizer would be your saffron. Now, based on what you understood earlier, um, what would be the final, um, what stain would your gram-negative bacteria would absorb? Is it your primary stain or your counter stain? Which stain would absorb would be absorbed by your gram negative bacteria class. Yes, Mel. Uh, is it the counter stain, sir? Okay, it's your suffering. So why why the counter stain, Mel? You have an idea? Since, sir, I think sir, it's because I'm color, sir sangaton na stain, sir, when it comes to gram negative, it's it ranges from pink. To red stain or color. Yes, that's 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 a good that's a good data. That's an answer as well. Okay, good. Um, diba class uh, earlier. If your bacteria, balik tayo. If your bacteria class is gram negative, your bacteria. Imagine this would be your bacteria, but a gram negative one. Now, when you stain this with CV. The CV would penetrate it. The crystal violet, your primary stain. Now, um, they would now upper appear purple. Now I would add your mordant. Then you would add your decolorizer. So Mel. Based on the rule, dito sa theory na to, after adding the decolorizer, what would happen to the crystal violet that is inside the cell wall? Mel? How would it disrupt, sir? Ma change siya? Mag it would penetrate, di ba? Ah, penetrate, okay. Yes, it would penetrate. Remember, it's easy. Gram negative are permeable to the colorizing agent. So your decolorizer would penetrate. Then what would happen to the crystal violet? So remember, you're using a decolorizer or a decolorizing agent. So what would happen to the 
crystal violet man. Uh, it would affect sir. Yes, uh the one Ralph you're raising your hand. Try lang sir, makakasa sir. Mag ano siya? I mean makakas. <laughs> makakas, okay. What would happen class is that they would be decolorized. Ma ano yung instead of purple the decolorizer would turn the, that to clear. And when you add, and now you have a clear bacteria, or a colorless bacteria, you would now add your safranin. And your safranin would then penetrate the bacteria causing it to appear pink. Now, uh, how about this one? Let's try your gram positive. Okay. This would be now your gram positive. So you would add your crystal violet. Papasok siya. Papasok siya. It will enter the cell wall. So um, after that, you would add your mordant. Then you would add your um, decolorizer. Okay, question. What happens in this situation, class? Anong mayayari? This is a gram-positive bacteria. So you've stayed it with your crystal violet. You've applied the more than then you would apply the decolorizer. What would happen now to the bacteria class? Yes, lads. Um, try lang, sir. Um, ang bacteria, sir, ma stay siya sa purple kasi um, it is gram-positive. It will less penetrate the bacteria by the decolorizer. decolorizer, decolorizer. Very good. So they would, it would retain the crystal violet. Kasi hindi ma-penetrate, less penetrative. <laughs> Sorry sa sulat. <laughs> less penetrative sa cell wall. And now, you would add your counter stain, your safranin. What would happen now? Anyone? So if you add your safranin, what happens to the safranin class? So retained yung crystal violet sa cell wall. Anyone? Come on, try nyo class. You're not gonna die or you're not gonna sing if you get it wrong. Come on. Try lang. So remember, retain yung crystal violet nyo. So if you add safranin, what would happen? Yes, Ralph. Uh, the color now then, sir, will be or will become pink to red, sir. No, you're, this is gram-positive. This is gram-positive, Ralph. So remember, in gram-positive, the final appearance of your bacteria would be purple. So what would happen if you add safranin here? Yes, Mel. How uh, would it still remain, sir? It's because nga it can't penetrate, sir. Okay. So since you have your crystal violet retained in the cell wall, safranin is not able to enter to enter the cell wall. Thus it would have no effect. 
hindi ma-absorb yung saffron. So again, class, in gram negative, if you would stain it with crystal violet, add with a mordant, then the colorizer. And remember, based on the rule or the theory, gram negative are more permeable to the colorizing agent. So once you've added the decolorizing agent, the decolorizing agent would penetrate the cell wall and it would remove or make the, the primary stain clear or gone. After that, you would add your counter stain, safranin. Since there is no crystal violet or primary stain, the safranin would be absorbed, making your bacteria appear pink. Well, for your gram-positive class, your bacteria would absorb the crystal violet. You would add your mordant to enhance the, the dye. After that, you would add the decolorizer. And again, based on the theory that the bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, is less permeable to the decolorizer, your decolorizer would not be able to penetrate the cell wall. Thus, it would retain... The crystal violet and when you add the counter stain safranin the safranin would not be able to enter the cell wall thus the primary stain is retained making your gram positive bacteria appear purple i hope that explains it may tanong ba class if you have questions don't be shy to ask tanong lang So the principle of gram staining class is that bacteria with thick cell walls containing tachoic acid would retain the crystal violet iodine complex dye after decoloration and appear purple, thus they are gram positive. Bacteria with thinner cell wall containing lipopolysaccharides do not retain the dye complex and appear pink, thus they are gram negative. So itong tachoic acid nyo, class, this can be found in your peptidoglycan. And your peptidoglycan, if you recall, is found in your cell wall. So if you have a very thick peptidoglycan, more of your gram-positive or your primary stain can be absorbed. And if you have a thinner, thinner lipopolysaccharide, so your cell wall kasi class is composed of your cell wall is composed of of LPS. which is the peptidoglycan. which has the echoic acid. Questions? So here's the procedure class of your gram stain. So you would add crystal violet. You would add your iodine or your mordant. Then you would decolorize. Then you would add your saffron. So nakita niyo dito class, um, in the first step, in your primary stain, all organisms, whether gram positive or gram negative, would absorb the primary stain. Same with mordant. So you, they would be they would absorb the mordant. Now, for those who are gram negative, uh, they would absorb the decolorizing agent, making them clear. But for the gram positive, the decolorizing agent is not able to penetrate the cell wall, thus retaining the primary dye. And when you add the safranin, those who have clear or uh, those who have removed the primary dye would then absorb the saffron, 
making them appear pink. Thus, they are gram negative. While the gram positive, they would be gram positive cocci. They would retain. They would retain the dye. Any questions, class? I think I saw. Sir Joe, good morning po. Thank you for visiting the class. Uh, class, our beloved uh, academic uh, supervisor is here, Sir Joe. Good morning, sir. Yes. Good, morning, good morning, sir. 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 Good morning, all. Just passing by, Sir Peter. Yes, sir. Apa. I will continue. Okay, class. Any questions for your procedure of gram staining? Yes, Lance. Yes, Sam. Sir, could you come back to the before that slide, sir? Okay. Okay, no, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sam, you. What's your name? Same concern, sir. Thank ah. you. Brand, na, Sam? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, no, sir. Okay. So, in gram staining class, you would encounter different problems. So, one of the problems you would encounter would be nothing is visible on the slide. Yes, Mira, you're raising your hand. Oh, sir, I was just going to clarify. Um, both thick and thin cell walls have um, tachoic acid, sir? Yes, they have tachoic acid. They have peptidoglycan. Your peptidoglycan would contain tachoic acid. The only difference this time is they have thinner cell walls. And when you have thinner cell walls, you have thinner peptidoglycan. And when you have thinner peptidoglycan, you would have less, less tunan tachoic acid. Does that answer the question, Ms. Mira? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let's proceed that. So we, again, in your gram staining, you would encounter different problems. Now, one of the problems would be nothing is visible in the slide. So a, poss a possible cause for that is your smear is too thin. Slide was wiped during the drying process and smear was not heat fixed. Class, if you recall, itong dalawa, it is very important, di ba? Um, class, when would you do your heat fixation? If you recall sa bacterial smear preparation natin, when would you do your heat fixing? Yes, sir. After the air drying of the sample, sir. Okay, very good. So you would do this after air drying. Now, in your practice in the future class, may mga instances kasi na there will be times when if you're having too many specimens and you would tend to forget to heat fix that. And when you do not heat fix that class, we have your so-called washing out. So, example class, here's your slide. You would add your crystal violet. Then, you would rinse it first. Babanlawan mo in Tagalog. You would rinse it with water. After rinsing class, you would add the mordant. Now, in this case, you did not heat fix it. After rinsing class, washing out would happen. And when I say washing out class, while you are rinsing, imagine this would be the smear. While rinsing, it would be included in the rinse. Kasama siya class na mawawala habang binabanlawan mo. So do not forget to hit fix this. And remember, your fixation's purpose is to make, is to adhere 
to make the adhere to the the slide. Smear to thin class. So remember, it has to be. What's the proper way, class? Ano yung, where would you compare your smear? If you recall, tinuro ko sa inyo. Last ano natin, module. Where would you compare your smear to know if it is at the right amount or the right thickness? Yes, Sam. Sa newspaper print, sir. All right. So if the if you, if the newspaper print is visible, is visible, or too visible rather, it is too thin. Yung tipong kitang kita nyo, you you could easily see every letter. So it should be just um wherein you could see see the fine fine print to have the proper thickness and then slide was wiped during the drying process so let's say example you would after staining glass you added your safranin you added your um ano na, tapos na kayo. you're already done with your um your staining you're already done with your gram stain all of a sudden you inverted you inverted you inverted the slide Instead of uh, wiping, wiping the clear, the clear slide, the clear side, ang winaip nyo, ang pinonasan nyo, is the side wherein the smear was found. So be very careful with that class. And to be honest, nangyari na sa akin yan while practicing. Even even practicing when I was uh, when I started my profession, I accidentally wipe uh, wipe the sample. So I have no choice but to repeat repeat the entire smearing and another problem class which you encounter would be your stain pre precipitate present now this would be caused by unfiltered stain class question if you have any ideas question lang what would you use in filtering stains what would you use in to filter a stain if you have any ideas Mira, do you have any idea on what you would use to filter a stain? Sorry, sir. Do you go sure, sir? Okay, you go. That's your idea. <laughs> okay. Lang. Um, do we use something like a sieve? Uh, not really a sieve. Uh, remember, this is a liquid. So what what would you use to filter a liquid if you recall in your chemistry classes? Yes, Lance. Yes, Andrea. Okay, si Lance muna. Filter paper, sir. <laughs> All right. So you would use a filter paper. So uh was it taught to you how to fold the filter paper? Naturo sa inyo yun. You would you would make it appear like a cone. So I'm sorry if, if this was face to face, but the demo ko sana sa inyo. So imagine class, um, you have your, uh, you have here your strain. Then this would be your bottle. So you would add in a cone shape the filter paper here. Now this is very important class because stain precipitates happen due to prolong, due to prolong storage. And when precipitates are usually clumps, buo yan class, and they could be cause uh, they can cause erroneous results when you read when you read your your stained smear. Okay, so it is very important class. Let's say mago open kayo ng bagong set ng if you would open a new, you would open a new set of a staining kit. It is very important that you filter them first before using them, because um, you have no idea on how long they were stored, how long they were removed, 
and that could lead to your clumping, which could in interfere in your reading, leading to erroneous results. Mamaya, mabasa nyo siya as a gram-positive bacteria or a gram-negative bacteria. So you have to filter it using your filter paper. Questions, class? Okay. Another one, another problem, class, is when gram-positive cells appear gram-negative. So this would be caused by the removal of your magnesium RNA, non-viable organisms that are gram-variable, and technical error. So technical error class. So when you say technical error, this is human error. Human error, specifically um, sustaining, sustaining procedure. Sustaining procedure. So based sa the discuss natin kanina, um, what do you think is the cause of a gram-positive cell appearing gram-negative? What step in the staining procedure was missed? Any ideas? Yes, Andrea. Um. Kaya lang, sir. Ang um, incomplete decoloration, decolorization, sir. Mm, uh, that would happen here. Uh, that would happen if your gram... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, gram negative appears gram positive. Yes, Mira. Uh, sir, is it because the mordant was not added? Yes, possible. Yes, more than was not added. What else? Remember, gram positive would appear gram negative. So this time, yung gram positive new class, uh, the crystal violet was removed. So when would that happen? It has something to do with your decolorizer. Any ideas? Yes, Mira. Uh, maybe, sir, the uh, sample was put in, uh, soaked with decolorizer for too long. All right. So we have your over decolorize. So if you did, you forgot to add the more, more than, to add the more than, and if it is over, decolorize. Kapag naman class, gram positive would appear gram, uh, gram negative would appear gram positive. Ano yung sinabi mo kanina? Was that, was that Andrea? Yes, sir. Anong sabi mo kanina? Um, incomplete decolorization, sir. Okay, all right. So if there is incomplete decolorization class, your gram negative could appear gram positive. Kasi hindi na properly remove yung primary dye, making it appear gram positive. Still. Then we also have gram negative organisms looking like needles than rods. So we have your so-called Saffron in crystals class. So these are precipitates. So again, remember you have to filter. Ito yung sinasabi kong er erroneous results class na pwede nyo may encounter. Gram negative organisms looking like needles than rods. So we have your saffron in crystals wherein there would be precipitates of saffron in crystals. Di pa ako nakaka-encounter ng ganito class. Ang na-encounter ko pa lang, if I recall, was carbolfuxin. Carbolfuxin na crystals. Bukas silang walis tingting. Ganun, ganun, ganun itsura. Parang, parang ganyan. Itong saffronine crystals, I haven't encountered. Siguro ganyan din ang itsura niya. 
And another problem when gram negative would appear gram positive. So under the colorization, prolonged staining. Prolonged staining ng crystal violet. As in tipong uh, to absorb the punong puno. To absorb to the point that to absorb of the crystal violet to the point that the crystal violet is no longer removed. It's no longer removed by the it's no longer removed by the the colorizer. And again, technical errors or human errors. Mixture of gram positive and gram negative organisms from pure culture. So this could happen if the smear is too thick or your culture is contaminated. So that is why it is very important class to practice aseptic technique. Question. Okay. Let's proceed now to your acid fast staining class. So your acid fast stain class is a tool for the identification of your mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is used to stain bacteria that have high lipid content in their cell wall. So the principle of your acid fast stain states that the primary stain would bind to your mycolic acid in the cell wall of the mycobacteria and is retained after decolorization with acid alcohol. The AFB stain, pink, straight, or slightly curved rods, Sometimes with a beaded appearance in a blue background. So yung mga acid fast basilay nyo class. Okay, acid fast basilay would appear pink daw. Pink, straight, or slightly curved rods. Sometimes with beaded appearance needed appearance in a blue background in a blue background class question itong needed appearance na to if you recall sa mga components ng ng bacteria na dinidiskus natin before which part of the bacteria is that that gives the needed appearance We're talking about here mycobacteria class. Ah. Any ideas? What part of your mycobacteria would give the beaded appearance? Starts with the letter S. <laughs> Pula class. Okay, remember, di ba, um, your my mycobacteria has endospores. So, ang spores nyo class would give the beaded appearance ng mga basilay. So this is the procedure class of your acid fasting. So you would have a primary stain, which is your carbolfoxin. Then you would add a mordant. Now your mordant here class isn't a type of dye or a chemical, but your mordant here is heat. The mordant here is heat. Papainitan niya siya. 
So this would be 10 minutes. 10 minutes in carbofoxin. Then you would heat it till smoke arises. Then you would add your decolorizer. After that, you would add your methylene blue plus your counter stain. So in, in Sil Nielsen method of your acid fast stain class, you would have carbofoxin as the primary stain, mordant as heat, heat as mordant, decolorizer is your acid alcohol, and your methylene blue as your counter stain. So here class, acid alcohol. So this is a combination of HCl and ethanol. Any question? Any question? Okay. Another method class would be your Kinyon's method. So just to ano pala, just to add, this is your Hot method. Hot method because you would be using heat as your mordant. Another one would be your Kinyon's method or your cold method. Now this time class, you would not be using you would not be using heat as a mordant. But the difference lang this time is you have a higher concentration concentration of your carbofoxin. So I'm, I'm not sure on the exact amount, but if I recall, it's around 20% more concentrated. So you would add carbofoxin as your primary stain, acid alcohol as your decolorizer, and methylene blue as your counter stain. All right, there are some modifications of acid fast staining class. So you have your Pappenheim's method. This is used to differentiate Mycobacterium smegmatis from Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So in your lecture, this will be discussed class, so Mycobacterium nyo. Now, one of those is your Mycobacterium smegmatis. Your Mycobacterium smegmatis class is commonly found in your smegma. Now, smegma class, if you have an idea on this, is found in the penile area of the male. So imagine ikaw yung klase ng lalaki na hindi ka nagpatuli. You did not have your circumcision. You will still have your skin for skin sa penile area mo. Now, since enclosed yung penile area mo, your smegma would accumulate. Your smegma would appear as yellowish. Yellowish, um, parang, parang popcorn. Siguro I would compare it to a popcorn na maliliit sa penile area na ano. That is why class, circumcision is somehow considered um, hygienic sa lalaki due to the removal of the ano. So again, your Pappenheim's method is used to differentiate Mycobacterium spegmatis from Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Another modification of your acid fast is your Baumgarten's method. 
which is used to differentiate mycobacterium leprae from tuberculosis. So your mycobacterium leprae class is known to cause leprosy. So in leprosy class, you would have loss, loss of feeling. Nagugulat ka na lang, your body is decaying. Is decaying. So kung napanood nyo na class yung movie na Kingdom of Heaven ni Orlando Bloom ba yun? Sino ba yung beat? SC Orlando Bloom. So um yung king doon ng Jerusalem had leprosy at a young age. So his body was decaying without any feelings or ano. He died he died early. So the body is decaying, loss of feeling. And thankfully naman class ang leprosy now is almost may treatment na siya. It is almost eradicated. So world na sa buong mundo. Okay, so again, Poppenheim's method used to differentiate mycobacterium smegmatis from tuberculosis. Boom Gardens to differentiate leprae from MTB. Now, we have your so-called TB dots class. So this was included in your laboratory lecture. Now, um, before a class, TB is a very difficult disease to treat. Bakit? You may be wondering why. Because it would require a six to eight month long treatment program. So imagine you'll be taking the drugs for six to eight months. So we have, so ginawa ng mundo, they implemented your TB dots. TB dots is a tuberculosis directly observed treatment short course. So this is a six to eight month long program which aims to diagnose, treat, and prevent the spread of TB. So in TB TOTS test, you would have your tuberculin test. So this is a type of skin test class. So this is a basic screening tool where in inflammation in the skin with a 10 diameter of 10 millimeter or more is enough. So what happens here class is imagine this is your forearm. They would, the doctor or the nurse would prick, would prick here uh, a type of uh, needle that has uh, tuberculin. Then if there is inflammation, there is swelling. My swelling na greater than 10 millimeter, you're considered positive for TB. Pero kasi class, um, dahil sa Pilipinas, very common ang TB. Maraming cases ng false positive sa tuberculin test nyo. Use for patients less than 15 years old. So anyone here na naka, may kamag-anak na nagka-TB, na na-test na, 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 na ng tuberculin, or nagkaroon na ng TB, wala naman. All right, that's good to hear. At least, walang ano. Then another one would be your TB culture and drug susceptibility test. Now, you would use your solid or your liquid media. So for solid media class, you would use your so-called Lowenstein-Jensen media. Protein rich. Protein rich. This is a type of protein rich media. So I have a question, class. If it is protein rich media, um, ano sa tingin nyo ang source ng protein dito? Ano yung minimix when you make this type of media in ADS class?
possible protein source class na gag pwedeng gamitin sa media nyo. Wala. Okay. So, a good source class would be your X. So what um in in making Lewinstein Jensen you would add, Jensen you would add Ogawa. Another example of your solid media is your Ogawa. Media. Then for liquid class you have your so-called Middlebrook. Middlebrook series. Okay, we also have your rapid molecular test, which is your expert MTB rifampicin assay. So this is a rapid test that detects mycobacterium tuberculosis and rifampicin resistance. So um, dito class, you have five possible results na may encounter. You have your T, your RR, your TI, your N, and your I. So T would refer to MTB detected rifampicin resistance not detected. Sir, bakit rifampicin? Now, rifampicin class is a type of antibiotic. This is a type of antibiotic used to treat TB. And this is considered a core antibiotic. So when you say core antibiotic, if you become resistant to rifampicin, your TB now would become drug resistant. Drug resistant. So T would refer MTB detected, rifampicin resistance not detected. So in this case, you have common, common TB infection. But if you have RR result, MTB detected, rifampicin resistance detected, you would have a case of drug resistant TB. TI. MTB detected, rifampicin resistance indeterminate. So, hindi na determine kung resistant or susceptible ka sa rifampicin. While your N will refer to MTB not detected. While your I would refer to invalid, no result or error. So, in this case, you have to repeat the test. Another one would be your DSM, direct sputum smear microscopy. So this is the primary diagnostic method, provides a definitive diagnostic of active TB. Simple, economical. So when you say economical class, this is cheap. Ang presyo nito class, na the range lang sa 100 to 150 pesos. Ganyan siya kamura. Could be even put up in remote areas. Very easy to do. So you would have um, in the SSM class you would require two sputum specimens. One spot and one morning collection. So when you say spot class, example, pumunta si patient sa lab. Patient went to the lab to the lab at 10 a.m. Pagdating niya ng 10, 10 a.m., pagdating na pagdating niya, he is going to collect exact at 10 a.m. as well. Kaya siya tinawag na spot. When the patient went to the lab at 10 a.m., he or she would also collect the same time he or she went to the laboratory. Morning collection naman class, this would refer the, to the um, the next day. The next day, 
early morning. Then spot to spot collection. So imagine if dumating siya 10 a.m. Second collection niya would be 11 a.m. Again, kapag spot, patient went to the lab at 10 a.m., first collection would be at 10 a.m. as well. Kapag morning collection, the next day, early morning. Kapag spot to spot, 10 a.m., then second collection niya would be after an hour, usually at 11 a.m. Then you would require at least one teaspoonful, 5 to 10 ml of specimen is needed. So this is the example class of your DSSM after staining it with your AFB stain, either Silnilson or Kinyon. So here's the procedure for your sputum collection. Instruct the patient to rinse the mouth with water. Breathe deeply, hold breath for one to two seconds, and exhale slowly. Repeat the sequence twice. Cough strongly after inhaling deeply for the third time and try to bring up the sputum from deep within the lungs. Expectorate the sputum in the sputum cup. Examine the specimen to see that it is not just saliva. So this is class, your DSSM result and interpretation. So may dalawang klase ng method na pwede niyong reading using the conventional light microscopy and the fluorescence microscopy. So if medyo mayaman yung laboratory nyo, if your lab is rich or is economically capable, you could use the fluorescence microscopy. This is faster. The reason why it is faster class is because you are using high power objective. So mas malaki yung nakikita niyong field compared sa conventional which uses oil immersion field. So ang reading niya, if you see 1 to 9 AFB in 100 oil immersion fields, you would have plus N. So itong plus N na to class, let's say nakakita ka lang ng 4 na AFB. You will report that as plus 4. Pag nakakita ka naman ng 10 to 99 AFB in 100 oil, oil immersion fields, you would report that as 1 plus. If you're able to see 1 to 10 AFB for oil immersion field in at least 50 fields, you would have 2 plus. Then greater than 10 AFB for OIF in at least 20 fields, 3 plus. So I won't discuss this anymore. Just try to memorize them, class. So the proper way to read a DSSM would be like this, class. So padding horizontal method. Padding battlement method. So we have your classification of TB class. So we have your base on bacteriological status. So based on uh, if it is bacteriology confirmed or clinically diagnosed. So this one class, X-ray positive, DSSM positive. So, sa mga tests siya nagpa-positive. Then, based on anatomical site, pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB. So, when you say pulmonary TB class, it is isolated sa lungs lang. Kapag extra pulmonary, other body parts. So, we have your bone, eye. Nung isang araw, class, just to share to you, may isang patient na pumunta sa amin last Friday. Um, the patient was complaining of a, a wound sa anal area niya. 
nagtry na siya, nirestahan na siya ng antibiotic ng doktor. The wound started May pa, May 2021. So imagine five months nang hindi gumagaling. The wound is still not healing. Even after the addition of antibiotics, treatment and all. So ang, ang pinagawa ng doktor was for a, a TB test. So may culture, may DSSM, may expert. Uh, hindi namin ginawa kasi hindi naman pwedeng ako or yung mga kasama ko yung magko-collect ng specimen. Kadiri naman, saka hindi natin yung ginagawa class. We do not collect discharge, specifically anal discharge. Ang gagawa lang yan is yung doktor. So yung bone, yung eyes, ang pinaka-rare, ang pinaka-na-encounter ko na TB was, if I recall, spinal TB. Saka, yun, yun so far, yun pa lang naman. So extra pulmonary class, this is outside the lungs. And these are the first line drugs used. So you have your pyrazinamide, rifampicin, isoniazide, tambutol, and streptomycin. So kapag ito, naging resistant ka dito, class. If you become resistant to rifampicin or isoniazide, you would be considered drug-resistant TB. So kanina, ang sabi ko, 6 to 8 months ang treatment for normal TB. Kapag naman DRTB class, it would last 1 to 2 years. So imagine you're taking drugs for 1 to 2 years. My God. So again, pyrazinamide, rifampicin, isoniazid, etambutol, streptomycin. So tandaan nyo na lang class yung sire. Sire P. Streptomycin, isoniazid, rifampicin, etambutol, and pyrazinamide. Para hindi nyo makalimutan yung first line of drugs. Then we also have your classification of TB. So monoresistant TB, resistant to resistance to one first line anti TB drug. So let's say resistant ka lang sa rifampicin. Kapag naman poly drug resistant resistance to more than one first line. So it's either isoniazid, rifampicin, rifampicin sabay. MDR class resistance to is both isoniazid and rifampicin. Extensive we have your so-called XDR. Resistance to any fluoroquinoline, quinolone, and to at least one of the three second line injectable drugs. And we also have your RRTB. Resistance to rifampicin detected using phenotypic or genotypic method. So this would be from your expert machine. That ends our staining part class. Before I proceed to your module five, the final module class will be your sterilization. So sterilization class is where in a, a sterile surface or object is completely free of living microorganisms and viruses. Sterilization procedure kills all your microorganisms. So class, whenever you hear sterilization, just remember, kills all microorganisms, whether pathological or non-pathological. Methods used in sterilization procedure includes heat, Ethylene oxide gas, hydrogen peroxide gas, plasma, ozone, and radiation. In our practice class, you will only be dealing with this two, radiation and the heat. So later I'll explain that. The probability of a microorganism surviving on an item subjected to treatment is less than one 
in 1 million. So imagine class 1 in 1 million ang possibility na mag-survive ang bacteria or a microorganism sa sterilization. This is a sterility assurance level. So if you're asked what is the sterility assurance level, it is uh, survival in less than 1 in 1 million. Disinfection eliminates the most pathogens but not necessarily all types of microbes. So in disinfection naman class, um, most pathogens, they do not typically kill, not, does not kill, does not kill non-pathogenic. Disinfection reduces the level of microbial contamination. Chemical disinfection does not kill spores, unlike chemical sterilization. Some common laboratory disinfectants include freshly prepared 10% bleach or sun rocks and 70% ethanol. So your bleach here, class, is your sodium hypochlorite. Sun rocks in a more generic name. Antisepsis. So antisepsis is the application of a liquid antimicrobial to skin or living tissue to inhibit or destroy microorganisms. It includes swabbing an injection site on a person or animal and hand washing with germicidal solution. In antisepsis class, you just have to remember skin or living tissues. You would be using this to disinfect or to clean, to remove uh, microorganisms in the skin or the living tissues. The contamination class. This the contamination renders an item or material safe to handle. The level of microbial contamination is reduced enough that it can be reasonably assumed free of risk of infection transmission. So in the contamination class, this would often refer to your equipment or apparatus. Sterilization, disinfection, and antisepsis are forms of your decontamination. Physical methods of sterilization class. So we have first scrubbing with soap and hand washing or hand washing. Filtration, used to sterilize antibiotic solution and vaccines. So, so filtration class, we have your Chamberlain filter, millipore, centered glass, diatomaceous earth filter, and your HEPA filter. So your HEPA filter in your class, this would be found in your BSC, biosafety cabinet. Then another method, physical method, is your sedimentation. The process of settling or being deposited as a sediment. Low temperature, 5 degrees for, for five degrees centigrade for the ref temp, 0 degrees or sub-zero freeze drying through sublimation. High temperature, such as pasteurization, moist heat, dry heat, and radiation. Now, pasteurization class is the process of heating and cooling food to kill your bacteria. So there are two types of pasteurization. We have your low temperature holding. This is done at 62.7 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. And high temp, short time, done at 71.1 degrees centigrade 
for 15 seconds. So this is usually done class for your milk, milk or dairy products. And naalala ko, tinanong to sa board exam. Kaya nagulat kami, bakit kasama to ng board exam nung nag-take kami? Buti diniscuss nung nag-lecture sa amin, nag-review center sa amin sa, sa micro. Another one would be your moist heat. So, this destroys organisms by the irreversible denaturation of enzymes and structural protein with the amount of water present. So, Sa, boi sa moist heat class, madaming methods. We have your boiling done at 100 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes. Then we have your free-flowing steam. Under free-flowing steam, we have your autoclave. So autoclave class, you would encounter this a lot sa micron nyo. So this is done at 121 degrees centigrade at 15 pounds of PSI for 15 minutes or 132 degrees centigrade. Tindalization or fractional sterilization, 100 degrees for 30 minutes for, th for 3 days or 60 degrees centigrade for 5 to 6 days. So sobrang tagal nitong tindalization class. Hindi ko pa siya natatry. But itong autoclave na natry na namin to. You will encounter this. Then, inspiration is used to sterilize culture media rich in proteins. So, this is what we use in, your, in our TB lab. Ginagamit namin to. Because we would use media rich in protein. So, this is done at 70 to 80 degrees centigrade for 2 hours for 3 days. Ganon katagal. Now, let's proceed to your autoclave. Autoclaving, also known as pressure cooking, is a very common method for moist sterilization. It is effective in killing fungi, bacteria, spores, and viruses, but does not necessarily eliminate prions. So this would refer to your viruses. Whenever you encounter the word prions class, you would, you would remember to associate them with viruses. So these are the types of autoclave. You have your pressure cooker type, a common lab autoclave, a vertical autoclave, a horizontal autoclave, and a large automatic hospital autoclave. So in your lab, in your future internship, you would encounter this vertical autoclave a lot. So, bakit kasama to dito? I won't discuss this anymore, class. Okay, here are autoclave compatible materials. We have your tissue culture flask, surgical instrument, glassware, pipe tips, media solution, animal food and bedding, waste, polypropylene, stainless steel, and gloves. Well, those incompatible with your autoclave are your acids, bases, and organic solvent, chloride, sulfates, seawater, chlorine, hypochlorite, bleach, non-stainless steel, polyesterine, polyethylene, low density, and high density polyethylene, and polyurethane. So these are more on plastics. And when you expose them, they would tend to deform. Another one after your moist heat is your dry heat class. So dry heat ovens are used to sterilize items that might be damaged by moist heat or that are impenetrable to moist heat, such as your powders, petroleum products, and sharp instruments. Sterilization by dry heat is accomplished by conduction. So examples of dry heat is heat by passing through a flame, 
using a hot air or oven baking at 160 degrees for two hours or 171 degrees for one hour or 121 degrees centigrade for 16 hours. There's also incineration and cremation. Incineration done at 300 degrees to 400 degrees centigrade and cremation done at 400 degrees centigrade to 1,000 degrees centigrade for burning bodies. Plus, due to the um, Clean Air Act, incineration is no longer done. So more on ano na lang tayo, um, either uh, autoclave, hot air, or oven baking. Then we also have your radiation. So kills, kills germs that can cause disease and neutralizes other harmful organisms. organisms. So we have your non-ionizing. An example would be your ultraviolet light. So they have longer wavelength and lower energy. While your ionizing, shorter wavelength, higher energy. So another type of sterilization is your chemical method. So we have your gaseous sterilization. So we have your ethylene oxide, formaldehyde, nitrogen dioxide, and your ozone. There's also liquid sterilization using alcohol, ethanol, and isopropyl, isopropanol, halogen, such as your chlorine, sodium, phenol, phenol, phenolic compounds, so whenever you hear here class phenolic compounds, this would refer to your lysol. Detergents, anionic and quartz, quartz, butyraldehyde, acids, and heavy metals. So that ends our module five.